Hi there, welcome to our next video on our C2 chemical resources topic and today we're going to be looking at ammonia which is a nice funky little chemical um, that's been around for quite a while. Anyway, I hope you enjoy and I'll see you at the end. Okay, so our objectives for our lesson today in making ammonia. Okay, right, let's move that across a little bit, there we go. Um, by the end of this lesson, you should understand how the harbour process is used to produce ammonia and what conditions are the most suitable for the production of ammonia. So, what is ammonia? Now, ammonia is a gas at room temperature that has the formula NH3. Now, ammonia is made from two things. It's made from nitrogen and from hydrogen. Now this is an example of what we call a reversible reaction. So the nitrogen reacts with the hydrogen to form the ammonia. Now at the same time the ammonia will break down to form nitrogen and hydrogen. Now this thing here is what we call an equilibrium arrow or a reversible reaction. Okay, so that's a reversible reaction. Now ammonia can be used for a number of things. It can be used for the production of nitric acid. It can be used in fertilizers. and it can be used for explosives. Now the Harbour process is, was designed by a German scientist by the name of Fritz Harbour. Now he developed this in order to make lots and lots of ammonia. Now ammonia as we said in the last, uh, last section was used for explosives and that was one of the primary reasons that he developed this this idea. Now it was during the First World War that Fritz Haber probably came to came to be very well known. He was a, a German scientist who developed the first chemical weapon ever used in war which was chlorine gas that was fired into the trenches. Now on, after its first successful use um, he and his colleagues were celebrating about the success and his wife um, who couldn't take the humanity of, of what had, had happened and what her husband was responsible for and she took a gun and shot herself in the next room. Now the harbour process is uh, was obviously developed for that use of explosives and it follows that, that reaction where we take the nitrogen and we add some hydrogen and we end up making some ammonia. Okay, now again, it's a reversible reaction as we've seen, but it's not balanced. Now what we need is we need three lots of the hydrogen and that will make two lots of the ammonia. Okay, so that is now our balanced equation for, for that reaction. Now what happens is we have a, a unit which the uh, nitrogen and the hydrogen are entered into and what this does is this puts it under high pressure. Now it also uses an iron catalyst and a high temperature of 450 degrees centigrade. Okay, and when this happens, the gases that are um, in, uh, put into this pressure are then able to react and the ammonia is able to be produced as a liquid. So nitrogen and hydrogen go in and then the ammonia is, is condensed out and put through a cooler to get liquid ammonia. Now when we look at the conditions that we need for a rate of reaction and specifically for the harbour process, it's quite an interesting interesting look. 
Now, we've got here a graph that's got two lines. Now, we can see here, as the temperature goes up, for both these lines, they decrease. And this here is the yield, which tells us how much we're actually producing as a percentage. So at the top here, we've got 100%, and it goes down to 0%. Now, we can see the lower the temperature, the higher the yield. Okay? Now, this means that at a low temperature, we're going to get more ammonia being produced. Now, the reason why we actually put the harbour process at 450 degrees is because the initial reaction between the nitrogen and the hydrogen, it speeds up with the increase in temperature. So we're going to get more collisions, more reaction at that initial stage. So this is why we have the temperature uh, closer to this, this temperature here. Now, we can also see that the red line here is the lower pressure at 200 atmospheres, and here is 400 atmospheres. So we can also see that when we increase the pressure, we get a higher yield. So here, this is roughly the yield that we are hoping for if we're doing it at 400 and 400 atmospheres. And 200 atmospheres, we're going to have a yield around about here. Now, if we have a look at the actual data for this, here we have the, the graph. So we've got the uh, pressure at 200 atmospheres, and here's the, the yield in percentage, and here is the different temperatures. Now, you can see that all of them decrease and decrease here. And at the 400 atmospheres, we've got the um, bigger yield than at the 200 atmospheres. Now, in your exam, you might be asked to interpret information like this um, just, to, just to help um, predict or suggest what the actual conditions for the harbour process are. Now, let's just reiterate then. If we increase the pressure, the yield increases. If we increase the temperature, the yield decreases, but the rate of the reaction increases, and it's quite key to remember that. Okay, now the last point we're gonna, gonna look at today is the cost of the harbour process. Now, we have looked at the higher the pressure, the higher the yield that we get, so the more ammonia we're making, but we also need to consider um, these, these criteria as well. Now, obviously with higher pressure and higher temperature, you're going to get an increase in the amount of energy that you are using in terms of gas and electricity. You've also got to consider the labour costs, the people that are actually running the, the harbour process plant. You also need to think about the speed of the reaction, which is obviously you want a higher energy to increase the speed, but you don't want it too high that it creates the decomposition of the ammonia. And the last thing that you want is the cost of the starting materials and the cost of equipment. Now, within that cost of equipment, the higher pressure, you're going to need to obviously have more resources and therefore a higher cost. Right, have I finished now? Have I? Yeah, okay, all right. Oh, right, oh, hello, sorry. Now, um, yeah, we, we've just finished looking at the harbour process. We've looked at the... Uh, the reaction, remember it's a reversible reaction, the nitrogen and hydrogen combine and then the ammonia decomposes to form those two again. We've looked at the harbour process uh, and how it's actually carried out and we've looked at the conditions and the cost values that we need to consider as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.